Hey, it's Courtney Slaznik with ClickItUpANotch.com and I'm going to show you my basic workflow for importing my photos into Lightroom and how I quickly edit them. So you're going to open up Lightroom. I have Lightroom 5 and go up here into File, click Import Photos. On the left hand side it's going to show you a bunch of devices that you can use to pull your photos from. I'm going to pull it from my camera which is my D700. As you can see, some of these pictures are grayed out. That's because I've already uploaded them to Lightroom. And then the ones with checks, I have not uploaded to Lightroom yet. On the right-hand side, there are several options. I have all of these smaller. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Up top, I copy as a DNG. I shoot in RAW, so I want to copy all of my images as a DNG, which is digital negative. Um, and so that's what I do. Over here, I upload all of my images directly to my external hard drive, which is this device right here. I call it my Mac Daddy external hard drive. Basically, I, I use Lightroom as a device to view my pictures, but Lightroom does not house your pictures. It does not store them in there. They still have to be stored somewhere on your computer. So mine are stored on my external hard drive. I categorize mine by year, then month, then date. So I'm going to pick my 2014 folder for January. As you can see, I've already have some. I'm doing a Project 365, so I'm taking pictures every day. So in the subfolder, I'm going to pick today's date, which is the 7th. And then I just put a little description of what's going to be in here for me in case in a year from now I don't remember what photos I took on January 7th. So I'm just going to put Emma with babies on my bed. Then you can see right down here, it's italicized that that is the folder it's going to be going into. They're all checked, that's what I want, so click import. Okay, all the pictures are imported. You can change the size of your thumbnails down here. We are in the library um, mode right here, so I'm going to make my thumbnails as large as possible, and I'm going to go through and pick which ones I want to keep and which ones I want to delete. So, in order to select certain ones, this is what I do, obviously pick whatever works best for you. I click on it and then I push the command key and I go through and I click on the ones that I want to delete. There's no rhyme or reason, it's just whether or not I just want to keep them or don't. These were just a couple of snapshots I took of my daughter on the bed. So I just go through quickly. One of the ways I decide if I'm going to keep it or not is if I have a couple of the exact same pose, I'm not going to keep all of those. So just go through. Then once I've picked which ones I want, and again I use the command key so that I can select certain ones, I'm going to right click. Or, there you go, <laughs> right click. And I'm going to pick remove photos. Personally, I just remove them from the disk. I don't want to keep photos that I don't want to keep forever. So if I'm not going to edit them and put them in a photo book or do something with them, then I delete them. Every photographer has their own philosophy. Some people never delete any image, and that is perfectly fine. Just figure out a system that works for you. I take way too many pictures for me to keep them all, even if I bought every hard drive under the sun. It's just not something I want to do. Um, but Obviously, I'm still keeping a lot. I'm deleting 14. I'm going to delete them from the disk, which means it is going to delete them off of my external hard drive. I don't want them on my external hard drive. I don't want them anymore. They can go away. However, if you want to keep them on your external hard drive, you're going to click just remove, meaning just take it out of Lightroom. I delete from the disk, which again, it is gone forever. <laughs> Once I decide I want to d develop them, I'll go into Lightroom. I'll tweak it however I want. I don't do a lot of adjusting. So for white balance right now, I'm just looking for a neutral area that all three of my numbers on the RGB are going to be about the same. That way I know it's a neutral area and it's a good area for me to adjust my white balance. If you look under the navigator on the top left hand side you can see it's showing you a preview of what the 
white balance is going to look like, which is also a good idea if you get pretty close in your numbers and you can't find one that's exactly dead on, you can look over there and see if it's if it's close. So right now I'm looking at 56, 55, and 55. So we'll click on that. It's close enough. I'm going to straighten it. And I'm done. Since most of these were taken in the same light, I'm going to sync them. I'm not syncing the crop. Synchronize. So for white balance right now, I'm just looking for a neutral area that all three of my numbers on the RGB are going to be about the same. That way I know it's a neutral area and it's a good area for me to adjust my white balance. If you look under the navigator on the top left hand side, you can see it's showing you a preview of what the white balance is going to look like, which is also a good idea if you get pretty close in your numbers and you can't find one that's exactly dead on, you can look over there and see if it's if it's close. So right now I'm looking at 56, 55, and 55. So we'll click on that. It's close enough. I'm going to straighten it. And I'm done. Since most of these were taken in the same light, I'm going to sync them. I'm not syncing the crop. Synchronize. That's a little bright. Bring that down. A little bright. Still a little bright. Okay, these the light changed and I moved, so I'm gonna re-edit these. I'm gonna keep my white balance the same for all of these though. So you can go here to sync, check none. I just want the white balance to sync up since I already did that. And then, since I know several of these are the same, not that one, this one, I'm going to sync these up, check all, I don't like for it to sync the crop, but I do need to straighten it. As you can see, I'm a tilted shooter. My photos are never straight, and it's not on purpose. I just can't hold my camera straight, apparently. Okay, and then I'll edit these. The light changed again. Okay. Synchronize. Screw tilt on that one. Okay, there you go. So that is how I will have edited those <clears throat> 13 photos. So I'm going to click all of them. What I do is push, click on the first one, push shift, click on the last one. That lets me select them all. I'm going to right click, export. I always put it back in the same folder as the original. I put it in a folder called One Web, which means I'm going to use it for the web, or I do one that says One Print. I'm going to do these for print. So I don't want to resize. I want the resolution to be 300 for print. I'm going to sharpen for matte, and I do not want a watermark on there. So this is for print. Export those. If I want to also export them for the web, if you're going to put them all on Facebook or your blog, then I would export them in the folder called One Web. My blog is 900. If I'm exporting them to Facebook, I'm going to do 2048, resolution 72. I will sharpen for screen, and I'm going to include my watermark. Now I'm going to push export. So that is basically my workflow for editing my day-to-day -day pictures. And again, this is Courtney Slaznik with ClickItUpANotch.com. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you click like so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel.